I can tell you simply, foods, many foods contain anti-inflammatory benefits, simplest one being vitamin C, ascorbic acid. And foods that contain vitamin C, what are that they are really good at lowering inflammation. You're a genius. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. That was Dr. William Lee, a physician, scientist, and author dedicated to exploring the power of food as medicine. Today, we're going to dive into a topic that's crucial for understanding many aspects of our health, inflammation. In this video, you'll learn about what is inflammation, why it's important, what is chronic inflammation and foods that have anti-inflammatory foods benefits. By incorporating these foods into your diet, you can help manage and reduce chronic inflammation, promoting better health and longevity. Now let's hear from Dr. Lee Moore about what inflammation is. So uh, I'll give you my uh, my vantage on inflammation and why it's important. Uh, and Because I think a lot of the things that we see uh, clinically and what we see, what we experience as patients um, ourselves, is we tend to ex experience the extreme. And the terms that we tend to associate are with extremes. And this is where I think that, you know, I'd like to maybe take out my, my hammer and smash a couple of myths. Oh, a quick favor. We'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. Let's hand him a hammer. So, is inflammation bad? So, everyone hears that inflammation is bad, must crush inflammation, and not true. Okay, inflammation is uh, one process that our immune system actually controls. Our immune system is very complicated. I always say our immune system is kind of like an army of super soldiers, of special forces, and the different cells all are trained to use their own weapons to do their own thing. Um, and inflammation is is one of those acts or processes that part of our immune system uh, 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 plays a role in for health. So you're like, wait a minute, inflammation and health? What is the role of inflammation and in health? Why is that? Well, look, inflammation is necessary uh, because what inflammatory cells do is they're called into action. Special forces, those special forces go into action. Whenever you have something like injury, you cut yourself, um, have surgery, you injure yourself uh, in some way, a dirty wound, okay? Um, the, the body's reflex is to send a few of these special forces, inflammatory cells, uh, to that area to check it out. And with the idea that there might be bacteria there, and what they do is they um, light on fire this process called inflammation to burn out and destroy harmful bugs. And by the way, that fire that it light is also a signal for healing that tissue as well. Mother Nature is really clever. So the same fire that burns out the bad guys is designed to trigger all the healthy cells to actually finish healing, right? Now, I can tell you this because I also, in addition to cancer research, I also study wound healing. And wound healing, you cut yourself, you know, within the first um, few minutes, seconds to minutes, you get an inflammatory response. You ever cut yourself uh, and you see the first thing that happens, you know, if you're even if you're not bleeding, is you get this like pink swollen area around wherever you cut yourself. And, and it's a little painful, but uh, but it swells. And that's inflammatory cells coming there, dumping all those signals, cytokines, to bring in that fluid. It's killing any dirt and removing any dirt, bacteria. It's gobbling all the bad stuff away. And then naturally, over the course of, let's say, the first two days, three days, inflammation will go, all right, we got everything cleaned up. Time to, you know, get, go back to the shop. And so all the inflammatory cells go away. Inflammation goes back down. Wound is cleaned up. The fires triggered the healing process, and that's basically what happens inside and out of our body. That's why inflammation is a good thing. Any other examples of how inflammation helps us? By the way, you're uh, it's the fall, and you're sitting on an airplane. Let's say you decide not to wear a mask in today's world, and somebody next to you has got a cough. You're breathing in um, the, some of their germs. All right, and I'm using I'm deliberately not using trigger words, okay? But you're right. breathing in germs and. And those germs are going to go into your lungs. You know what our right. lungs do? They mount inflammation. Correct. Right? Our body senses that, send the same special forces out. They see the same thing. They cause the same swelling. That's why when you get a cold or, you know, you start to cough, you get a little congested, a little runny nose, that's all these little things, the inflammation is going on. So good until it's bad. All right. right. When is inflammation bad? Um, uh, when it's bad, the inflammation doesn't stop. It doesn't go away after 70, 48, 4 to 72 hours. It just sticks around. 
Okay. Right. And instead of allowing healing to go on, because, you know, the it's like the cops that actually go back to the station. Everything is calm in the neighborhood. The cops are out there and now they're busting out the boom boxes and having a riot themselves. Now you wind up having a problem. And I'll give people like a, a when inflammation doesn't go away, it's that fire that continues to burn. And the, right. the best analogy I'll give you is that think about inflammation like a camp, like it's fire, right? So imagine you're camping and you're out there with your friends and you have, have dinner and then you're going to make a campfire and you're going to, you know, warm yourself around the campfire. You're going to, you know, toast marshmallows or, you know, drink hot chocolate, whatever you're going to do, dark chocolate. And I would use natural marshmallows and not to eat any of them. Definitely yeah. dark chocolate. All right. Uh, so, um, uh, but what do you do at the end of the evening, right? That's inflammation in your fireplace. It's all contained right, right in that area. You're warming yourself. It's serving a really important role. And when you're going to go to bed, you put the fire out, all right? And then you go back into your tent and, and then in the morning, it started all over again if you need to, all right? That's in normal inflammation. You start it and it goes away. Chronic inflammation is like that fire you don't put out. You go back into the tent anyway, and now wind comes and blows the embers out of your fire pit into the forest. And now the forest is catching on fire. And first it's a brush fire, and then it starts burning the trees. And now you've created a massive forest fire right. that's not that can't be put out easily. It's not going to go out by itself. And now it's even threatening you sleeping in the tent. That's the analogy of chronic inflammation. It's the fire that jumped out of the fire pit um, that didn't get put out naturally and wound up actually going and spreading all around and creating a threat to the body. And that's what we see in diseases like chronic inflammatory diseases. You see this in lupus. You see this in rheumatoid arthritis. And by the way, you see this in cancer as well. Cancer stokes that fire. Or if you have that fire, it'll, it'll trigger cancer to grow even faster. So that's really the explanation of why we hear about inflammation being something that needs to be tamed, but we should all know it's intended to be healthy, just a short amount of it, and our body can, should usually tame itself. Are there natural ways to tame inflammation? Which So what can we actually do besides taking steroids and taking non-inflammatory, uh, you know, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, uh, you know, all the medic med medical stuff that we write prescriptions for? I can tell you simply, foods, many foods contain anti-inflammatory benefits Simplest one being vitamin C, ascorbic acid. And foods that contain vitamin C, what are that they are really good at lowering inflammation. Foods are anti-inflammatory. What are some of those foods? Strawberries, tomatoes, red bell peppers, um, uh, broccoli. All great foods that are good for so many other reasons. They have anti-inflammatory benefits. We'll give you a complete list of the foods highest in vitamin C per gram shortly. Fortified with vitamin C. Dr. Lee. What proof is there that these foods are actually anti-inflammatory? In fact, there was a study uh, that I cite in my book. In Japan, there's a Miyagi prefecture. There's a lot of women who have lupus and they have really bad lupus flares. And there was a study done to show that women who ate more vitamin C containing foods, strawberries, tomatoes, red bell peppers, broccoli, there's so many other ones as well. You can look them up. Okay. Uh, just This is the great, this is the amazing thing about, you know, the internet. One of the good things about the internet, vitamin C, foods, inflammation, clinical study, boom, hit hit return and you'll find resources that'll be put right to your fingertips, just like mine. All right. They show women who ate more right. vitamin C containing foods had lower levels of inflammatory markers in their blood, and they also had lesser and uh, less less and less severe flares of their lupus as well. Right. So we know what works. And yeah. these are decisions that we can actually make. Vitamin C. The foods highest in vitamin C per gram are typically fruits and vegetables. Here are some of the top contenders. 1. Kakadu plum, approximately 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 grams, making it one of the richest sources of vitamin C. Oh, come on, man. It's pure vitamin C. 2. Kamu Kamu, around 2,800 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 grams. 3. Acerola cherry. Approximately 1,678 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 grams. 4. Rose hips, roughly 426 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 grams. 5. Guava, contains about 228 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 grams. 6. Black shrimps, around 181 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 grams. 7. Golden kiwi. Approximately 161 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 grams. 8. Yellow bell peppers. 
approximately 200 mg per 100 grams. 9. Red bell peppers, approximately 128 mg per 100 grams. 10. Kiwi, approximately 93 mg of vitamin C per 100 grams. 11. Broccoli, around 89 mg of vitamin C per 100 grams. 12. Strawberries, around 59 mg of vitamin C per 100 grams. 13. Oranges, approximately 53 mg of vitamin C per 100 grams. 14. Tomatoes, approximately 20 mg of vitamin C per 100 grams. These foods are excellent sources of vitamin C, with some like kakadu plum, kamu kamu, and acerola cherry far exceeding the vitamin C content of more common fruits like oranges and strawberries. You need your vitamin C! Please give us a thumbs up, share this video with your friends and family, and subscribe to our channel for more valuable content on health and wellness. Your support enables us to continue delivering essential information to assist you in leading a healthier life. Thank you for watching, and as always, I wish you excellent health, wealth and happiness, with the key to vitality in your hands.